I am currently wearing leggings over my leotard. No, leotard over my leggings. Because I am going to a market and it is cold, so I'm going to wear thermals. Anyway, that's not what this video is about. How to cut toxic people out of your life. So, last week I spoke about how to recognise toxic people and why you need to cut them out of your life. This week I'm going to talk about how to do that cutting. Snip, snip. Before we get going, if you would like to subscribe and also press the bell so that you get a notification every time I post, that would be cool. Other than that, let's get going. So number one, accept that it might take a while. If you've been friends with this person for a while or in a relationship with this person for a while, obviously you're not gonna get over them overnight. It's not just cutting them off, it's allowing yourself to kind of grieve that friendship as well. And it's not gonna happen ridiculously quickly. It's gonna be a process. You're gonna have like bits where you feel like you're doing great and you don't miss them at all and then you're gonna have bits where you're like, oh my god I really miss them, why, why am I not with them still? Or whatever. So it is gonna be a process, just accept that and be ready for it to have highs and lows because otherwise it's just gonna be a mess. Also vice versa, they aren't gonna respect your boundaries so if you say actually I'm gonna take a step back by they might not respect that and try and come back into your life again and again. And that's when it gets difficult. Number two, don't feel like you owe them a huge explanation. You don't have to give them an explanation. I mean, I haven't in mine because they've been quite toxic that I just not wanted to speak to them at all. And any explaining you do is more for them than it is for you, I found. So I've been quite selfish in mine and just cut them off but that's what you almost have to do to move on I think. If you are going to give them an explanation tell them how you feel, tell them why you're doing it but don't leave it open to how they can change your opinion on it. Do it and get it over and done with, rip off the band-aid and then leave. Get that brick, get that hip and leave. Fish and leave. How much or how little you tell them about how you're feeling is really up to you. You don't have to tell them anything if you don't want to, so keep that in mind as well. I mean, I know that like most of the time when I cut people off, I want to let them know, just because I'm a bit of a people pleaser and I feel bad for doing it, even though it's actually them who's made me feel bad. And blah, blah, blah. Number three, walk in a public place. If you are going to give them an explanation and let them know, then do it in somewhere public, because it means that that person can't have a horrible or angry or violent reaction well I mean they can but they're less likely to because they're in public so do it in like a cafe or something like that and that way they have to kind of keep their emotions in check which I think is a good thing I mean if you don't want to do it in person don't do it in person you can just do a text because that will just leave it at that but if you're going to do a text I would recommend doing a text and then blocking them because they will come back with messages and then I feel like you're in like an argument of back and forth and it's that's mentally draining but yeah if you're going to do it in person do it somewhere public not in your house or somewhere where they can get angry or violent because it's just not fun for anyone Number four, block them on social media. The last thing you want is seeing them all over your social media and thinking, oh god, like, what if I've done the wrong thing, blocking them off, blah, blah, blah. When actually, you have done the wrong, right thing. Because you would never have even thought about this thing if they weren't malicious or toxic. Social media makes <laughs> distancing from someone really difficult, so a way to kind of combat that is by blocking them and it sounds really brutal like oh block them on social media but actually it's for your mental health and you're already cutting them out of your life so why does it matter if you're blocking them on social media too you set these boundaries in your life so you need to set them on social media as well this includes preventing them from contacting you via social media because also if you message them saying look like i'm out i can't do this anymore blah, blah, blah. and you leave it open as i said it creates a window for them to go back and forth and kind of persuade you back into it and kind of work through problems but then those problems will still be there. Just block them, it's so much easier and it just lifts a weight from your, my head, heart, place, body. I've done this and it, genuinely I just don't think about them anymore and it's great. Number five, don't argue. <laughs> As I said previously, if you keep that window open you are probably gonna argue and it's not fun because it just makes you feel awful. If they do return and you do you kind of have that back and forth? Just make a promise yourself not to argue. If you're gonna say stuff, just be like, okay, I respect your opinion, and just leave it at that. Don't ask questions back, don't kind of initiate any conversation, but if you do wanna keep it open and not block them, then 
yeah, you need to not argue because then you're taking on their toxic traits and that's not good. You don't want to be bitchy people. And also, you're not trying to debate the person having a place in your life or leaving you alone or whatever. It's not a debate. You've decided that for yourself. So don't let them try and sway you. It's not a negotiation and you need to let them know that from the get-go. Just be like super nice. I find this in arguments generally anyway. I try and be super nice because then the person actually is like, what am I being doing in the room? It does work. I promise you. I mean, maybe that's toxic. I don't know. Number six, consider writing a letter, an email, a text. You're not writing a letter to them, you're writing a letter to yourself about how you felt when you were with them. And the best time to do this is when you're actually really angry or upset after something they've done because then when you read it you'll be like oh my god it has so many emotions I did this once for an argument I had with my parents when I wanted to leave I mean I love them now but I was a 16 year old but if you write it when you're really angry with them or when you feel really hurt or whatever by them and then reread it when you're having doubts about cutting it off with them because that's that will make you remember how you felt at that specific time and how shitty you felt and it will make you realise why you've done it in the first place. Number seven, the final one. You don't have to divorce them, you can just separate. So that basically means you don't have to cut them off completely if you don't want to. If you're finding it really hard and you need them for certain things, like emotional things or whatever, you don't have to cut them off completely. I would recommend doing that because then you don't fall into the trap of going back to how it was originally. Another opportun opportunity, another thing you can do is create distance with them, just occupy your time by with other things and then just don't spend as much time with them, it's like weaning yourself off slowly. And they'll notice it, but you can just be like, oh my god I'm so busy. And then eventually you can cut them off, or if you don't want to cut them off and you want to see them maybe once or twice like a month, then that's fine too. But yeah, just wean yourself off if you can't do it straight away because some people are like drugs, like you need their attention and it's it's weird, isn't it? But anyway, we won't get into that. If you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe below and I will see you next week for another vlog.